also now pay it what what is good writing uh it's definitely more difficult than good reading and in fact perhaps the most difficult of the three because uh good writing makes reading easier and understanding even better so all three are challenging but good writing is is extremely challenging okay there are different types of writing there is creative writing business writing poetry narrative novel autobiography dramas and plays writing for children news and blogs scientific and research writing so each has different style different target group and uh, what the reader seeks in this is quite different and particularly more in uh, scientific and research writing where the same topic could be written in uh, 10 different levels depending on what type of researchers are accessing this and uh, writing for children is very difficult let me be very clear writing for children is not easy because uh, Uh, we have to be a child ourselves to write very difficult that's why uh, writing for children is very few and uh, those who have succeeded in writing for children are amazing writers so what is good writing good writing is well organized and flows well with a consistent style or voice from beginning to end so unlike uh dramas and other uh, uh emotional episodes uh, good writing is reasonably well it may appear monotonous but that's the uh, skill of the writer to write in a consistent style and voice and at the same time bring in the emotions when needed good writing is also free from mistakes and errors in spelling punctuation and grammar and as i said what is good writing this may not be an easy question to answer many very different kinds of writing are considered good and for many different reasons there is no formula or program for writing well however there are certain qualities that most examples of good writing share so we will look at some of them following is brief description of five qualities for good writing one is focus the other is the development of the idea unity of perception coherence and correctness these qualities described here are especially important for academic and expository writing so this is it five qualities of good writing there should be fo focus an essay should have a single clear central idea each paragraph should have a clear main point or a topic sentence development each paragraph should support or expand the central idea of the paper the idea of each paragraph should be explained and illustrated through examples details and descriptions today you can even put graphs figures and images unity every paragraph is an essay in an essay should be related to the main idea each paragraph should stick to its main point coherence an essay or paper should be organized logically flow smoothly and stick together in other words everything in the writing should make sense to a reader and correctness a paper should be written in generally correct standard english with complete sentences and be relatively error free free of sms language all that okay good writing is a journey not a destination meaning while you are writing you cannot envisage when you are going to stop stopping criteria cannot be you cannot say i will write this in two paragraphs or i will write this whole thing in six pages so as you move and do it well whenever it stops that's it okay so what is good writing there is no single definition but we all know it when i see it when we see it meaning we all know when when the writing is good even though we may it's like 
taste, good uh, good masal dosa. How you can describe, but still only when you taste it, you know it's good and then there is no argument after that, okay? Improving your writing is a lifelong process of learning and self-discovery and editing, lots of editing. That's exactly why, uh, of course, this has become useful. Uh, this is a DTP assist where you can overwrite, erase, change, all that. But earlier we used to take a lot of rough sheets, write three or four times and then transfer it into a neat copy because uh, what you want to say and what you really end up writing in words, there is a lot of gap and it needs definitely refinement. Okay? One of the qualities of good writer is the ability and also the humility to edit their own work. Your writing may be pretty good on the first draft, but knowing that it can always improve is what makes it great, meaning every writing can improve till it reaches an idea of perfection. Uh, but I'm very sure all of us have gone through where we have written repeatedly the same paragraph and every time we write again, we see a sense of improvement. We want to put the words correctly. We want to rephrase the sentences. Many times we uh, flip sentences from one paragraph to another, all that, okay? We are all on a journey to find a perfect sentence construction, word and tone for the things we write and don't believe we'll ever get there. So enjoy the journey of honing your writing skill because you'll never hit a point where it's perfect. That point just doesn't exist, okay? Like I said, as you reach perfection. So there are some good practices. Uh, one is practice writing and ask for feedback. It's very important because uh, feedback is the only uh, mechanism to uh, filter out mistakes. Uh, after all that, we still would have made mistakes, but at least feedback allows you to prevent blunders. Okay. So this is one thing that's very important. The best advice I can give to new writers is to start writing. If you are not practicing the writing, you would like to master regularly, completing the ultimate task more difficult. So some writing experts recommend writing every day, more like a, more like a chore or a practice. Uh, but get a regular cadence of writing. One element of this discussion often left out though is regularly asking for feedback on your writing. If you are writing every day but not improving, you might be journaling, not developing a skill. So there's a lot of difference between reporting and information and building a narrative. This is, this is a problem with uh, journalists. Every day they cover different ideas and uh, their in writing does not improve. Because they don't, they just report some facts, some observations, some events and stuff like that. Uh, so there's a lot of difference between journaling and writing. Okay. You can have in-person writing groups to join and classes you can take to get in-depth feedback. I, I know some serious uh, uh, writers have tested their book on the students in the class. Draft copy uh, was uh, circulated in the class and the students were made to give comments, observations. They also had people who would early draft of good novels. Uh, reviewers are there. All this happens. Unless you have hundreds of feedback, uh, writing will not improve. This is one very important thing and people don't like feedback. Second, people don't get good feedback. Uh, even your best friend will give you feedback once or twice. After that, you ask him to read the same thing again and say, say, I've made these changes. Can you tell me what it is? He or she may not even respond enthusiastically. So getting feedback is a very important thing for good writing. Okay. You must also write to a specific reader, meaning... You can't write for everybody. You have a picture in mind of 
what kind of readers you are targeting and uh, based on that uh, you write your the style the the structure and the depth and the other narrations okay before you even find readers and ask you should try to write to a specific reader even when writing this general blog without post i am imagining a specific reader he is about 55 years old and has a long career in finance and wants to work on his writing skills so that he can start a memoir i have nicknamed him brian he probably has a dog so it's very important to first get a grip on what kind of readers you are targeting writing for everybody looks very political writing for a very elite narrow class of uh, target group that that's also there but you don't sell much you don't become popular you don't you are not widely read all that okay you don't need to picture a specific person but it's helpful to think about the audience you are writing that's why whenever uh, a lot of even day before yesterday I was called to two functions in Bangalore as chief guest, the only question I ask is, who are the target group? What kind of people are in the, in the audience? So that I can tailor my talk or speech or seminar which suits them. What level of education? What are their aspirations? Is it homogeneous or heterogeneous group, etc., etc. Okay, so it's very important to know who the target group or the audience of your writing is. Okay, good writing also involves plan your writing, and very interesting. I once had a writing teacher who said, "I will turn you from a producer to a plotter." So very interesting. You can produce pages, but developing a plot across pages is very challenging. And that's the kind of thing because you want to you want to involve and drag, draw the audience and the receptive uh, target group into what you are trying to tell or narrate by your writing. Okay. But at a hint at the difference between free writing your thoughts and carefully planning a piece of book or an article. So initially, we want to put all our thoughts on paper. Free writing initially, yes, bullet points, sketches, all that you put. And then you plan out how you are going to draw the paragraph or summary. That's very important. Free thoughts are necessary, but free thoughts will not make good writing. Planning the free thoughts as a sequence, a logical conclusion, maybe a surprise element in the middle, an interjection, whatever. So that's really what is needed. And when you write, read, read everything you can find by writers who, ad, who admire, whom you admire. If you are writing fiction, read short stories. If you are writing a cookbook, read recipes. If you are writing the next great management book, read Dale Carnegie. This way you can find templates that will help you plan your large next piece of writing. That's very important. Free thoughts are very important, but free thoughts are highly scattered, unstructured, unconnected, etc. Okay. Do your research, check the facts. Today, 80% of writing is fake. Okay. There's so much of fake things going on in the world. It will only increase. In another two, three years, you will have approximately 99.9% .9 of all audio, video, uh, script, text, everything which are fake generated by AI and chat GPT type. Okay, so you have to be very, very alert, very cautious, very sensitive to this. Okay, so check your facts. Back up any claims you are making in writing. Okay, and in non-fiction opinion and technical, this often means finding out what research or thought has already been done on this topic. So even for fiction, you can do some kind of fairy tale that's allowed. But like, like for example, the famous 
Tolkien series, which which is act of fiction, okay? And more important, more writing is not better writing. Be very careful. Brevity is the hallmark of quality. What you say in a paragraph perhaps can be said in a sentence, which is more effective than reading a paragraph. You must realize while they read the paragraph and they start with something and they end, most of the time we don't even know what, with what idea we started and what it is ending with. Whereas one powerful sentence can more or less capture the uh, entire paragraph. So it is not more, but it's how effective and how how uh, how coherent and how uh, how penetrative it is to the reader. That's the kind of uh, writing we need to do. So what is it in good writing? It's very difficult to say it's good or bad. You have to read it. But things can get more challenging if you have to explain why it is good. Even harder than this is analyzing the good things a writer is doing so you can learn to use his or her techniques in your own work. And teaching others how to use them is the hardest of all. That, of course, is exactly what we need to be able to do. Having simple phrases to describe the good things writers do makes learning about those things easier. Good writing has the following. Ideas that are interesting and important. So after all, you are uh, generally speaking, writing is basically storytelling. You are telling a story to some reader whom you may never know. You may never meet in person. But you want that reader to buy your idea or your story. So it must be interesting. Okay, Ideas are the heart of the piece, what the writer is writing about and the information he or she chooses. Organization that is logical and effective. Organizing the matter refers to the order of ideas and the way the writer moves from one idea to the next. You may have, may, you may have about 15 ideas which makes a good short, short story or novel. So how do you move from one idea to another? Okay. Voice that is individual and appropriate. Voice is how the writing feels to someone when they read it. Is it formal or causal or casual? Is it friendly and inviting or reserved and standoffish? Voice is the expression of the writer's personality through words. So one needs a very friendly disposition to the reader, gentle on the reader, but provocative enough for the reader to seek more and more. Okay? Word choice that is specific and memorable. Good writing uses just the right words to say just the right things. So, right words for the right things. Anything else is wrong. Okay? And sentence fluency that is smooth and expressive. Fluent sentences are easy to understand and fun to read with the expression. Don't get into bombastic words. It may look very literary, very interesting, but you will have very few readers. Simple, particularly for Indian readers, their level of English is very elementary. So try always to have short sentences, simple words that carries a lot of it. It's exactly what uh, R.K. Narayan uh, does. Okay, He understood the Indian readers so well. Uh, of course, the ideas he was conveying is also very rustic and naive, but he did a fantastic job. Okay. Conventions that are correct and communicative. Conventions are the ways we all agree to use punctuation, spelling, grammar and other things that make writing consistent and easy to read. Consistency and easy to read is, 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 is definitely the first step. So what do good writings eventually look for and uh, contain? First thing, follow the rules of grammar, the sentence construction, comma, full stop, punctuations, etc., etc., okay? 
Second, it, the writing is good if it is easy to read and it attracts the reader. It may be easy to read, but it may not attract the reader. Or it may be attract the reader, but it may not be easy to read. Okay. Third, it meets the reader's expectation. Every reader comes with expectation. For example, many of us read a book by a particular author. And if we are impressed with that, the next thing we do is go and buy or borrow the other books he or she has written. And let me tell you, it's been a terrible disappointment that many good writers uh, have written some amazing book books, but only one or two of them are popular. The rest of them is because they have written more out of emotion and commitment we buy and read rather than... Uh, so, a, a, a good writing is one where you get introduced to a new author whom you have never heard, probably the first time, and you get completely taken in. That's, that's good writing. We will see samples of that. Okay. Writing is clear and concise. Clear means no ambiguity, no no too much demand on the limited vocabulary, but effective. And at the same time, brief, long sentences, which may be Shakespearean style, all that, will not work well in modern writing because an average reader cannot handle uh, paragraphs and then try to make sense with that without losing the uh, track. Okay? Finally, it is efficient and effective. It's efficient, meaning it has served the purpose of conveying the information well and it is effective because the reader is satisfied and a curiosity and a motivation to know more about such things or to know more about related things, possibly from the same writer or author or from others. We will have a longer discussion this thing because I don't want to break the slides in the middle. Uh, we look at the good mm -hmm. understanding, which, which most of the time is a nightmare. Okay. So what is really good understanding? It's a really difficult aspect, but always has the advantage of anonymity and disconnect with both the author, the writer, his or her context of the content and more significantly, many times, alien with the subject matter. No direct or even second-hand experience. So, it's, it's very difficult for even authors to know or writers to know who has understood your work well. I, I haven't written much, but I had a very uh, very funny experience. We wrote a scientific paper some 10-12 years back in a, in a fairly reputed journal. And it was obviously uh, available worldwide. And uh, we got some comments and feedback and all that. But almost after a year, I got uh, a mail from somebody in China. Obviously, their English is bad. I know that. So, but uh, leaving out the language, they made a very interesting uh, observation. He said, uh, we have been using your journal paper as a substitute to a textbook in the classroom. We have found it very useful and effective. Uh, you have about 20 algorithms there. Can you share the code for it, the computer code for it? Because uh, the textbooks that uh, you give this material, our students find it very difficult to understand the English there. So 
our journal article was because it was written by us we did it in very simple sentences and uh, one of the most renowned textbook was what they were prescribed and this is so simple and effective writing is one of the best ways to make people understand okay and it's easy to appreciate if you are not involved everybody says it's a good book etc etc for example uh, books on war murder and tragedies uh, we understand we think we understand it well because uh, we are not involved we claim we are understanding but in truth we have not understood i mean we, we read a lot about war and none of us have experienced war of course good writers uh, bring about uh, such uh, uh, such rich immersive environment in the writing you feel you are already fighting a war and experiencing but that's really different so uh, let me let me make a very blunt statement uh, majority of the readers have not understood the writer well or the context it's 50% 60 70 80 even the best of them 90 because the last 10% they are out of this context they have not gone through a murder they have not suffered the tragedies that they suffered they have never seen a war but war murder and tragedies writing is very impressive okay so good understanding means the ability to comprehend or knowing the meaning of something implying that good understand can be related to any subject situation etc probably more difficult than reading or writing but appears more easier than the two everybody says i understand even in your class when you give a lecture say have you understood half the students will say yes we have understood understanding is very difficult if everything that is told could be understood half the communication in the world would have stopped why is it that we repeatedly tell the same thing in 10 different ways because we want them to understand somehow okay so understanding is not a easy thing we will come to that what is good understanding better is to look at the synonyms for that a mental grasp or comprehension when you say you understand something you actually comprehend the entire scenario the situation the personality the issue the attitude whatever it is the capacity to apprehend general relations of particulars the power to make experience intelligible by applying concepts and categories so a good writer about war will write in such a fine way that when you understand you actually feel that you have actually faced the war the way he is narrating that's really what is good writing and good understand not easy both are difficult good writing is very difficult understanding at depth is even more difficult okay in some sense a mutual agreement not formally entered into but in some degree binding on each side the writer and the reader when you say you have understood well you are almost saying i have understood you as a person i have understood your experience i can relate to it i am empathetic with it etc etc okay friendly or harmonious relationship with the writer an agreement of opinion or feeling adjustment of the difference we may have little differences but we overcome that and that's really what is meant by understanding what is written okay there is also an adjective version of this endowed with understanding means you are tolerant to their views you are sympathetic with their causes that's exactly what is meant understanding or knowing what they have meant and a very intelligent when you say intelligent you say intelligence is there to understand the others okay
various dimensions of understanding. Clear understanding, complete understanding, good understanding, mutual understanding, proper understanding, scientific understanding. <coughs> You may understand it very clearly, but it need not mean it is complete. You may understand it completely, but it doesn't mean that it is good understanding. Good translates to further action. It may be mutual understanding where it is a matter of convenience to both. You may have proper understanding, knowing the issue in various contexts and with various target groups. Scientific understanding is little different from this because scientific understanding is based on a lot of objective facts and measurements, which anybody can repeat. Repeatability is the hallmark of scientific correctness. So, scientific understanding need not have uh, dimensions of uh, more dimensions of subjectivity. Uh, then uh, lack of uh, domain knowledge, uh, no emotions, all that, okay? Now, while we have so many types of understanding, the converse of these are far more clear. Meaning, we keep using, very rarely we say, I have understood it clearly. You say, I have not understood it clearly. Or oh, this understanding is not complete. It's not good yet. I don't know whether you have understood mutual understanding is not possible. I have understood, but I don't know whether it's proper, etc. So, the word understanding is more frequently used in the context of misunderstanding. There is, of all the understanding in the world, 90% is misunderstanding, 10% is proper understanding. So, in some sense, you have to be persistent. You have to change the tone and the language. You may have to even change the context to make somebody understand it clearly. Okay. Take this task at understanding. Consider a hypothetical scenario of a man throwing a rock through the window of a parked car. Can you describe in some details why this happened? Just think. Consider a hypothetical scenario of a man throwing a rock through the window of a parked car. So there is a parked car with windows up. Somebody takes a rock and puts it through the window. Can you describe in some details why this happened? Just think in your mind for just one or two minutes. Why do you think this person may have done it. Okay. Then we can see the context of uh, narratives and writing and all that. So as soon as you are given this hypothetical scenario, your mind starts working, starts building images. Possible. What can be the uh, reason this fellow did that? And in some details, what kind of person he is, why he may have done it, uh, what is the background, etc., etc., what is his socioeconomic status, what are his uh, habits and attitudes, uh, is there any disturbance, so many things, okay, uh, is the domestic situation, whatever, okay. So this is really where it's important to understand because Subtle but vital difference. The difference between thinking critically and thinking in a lower primate way is roughly analogous to the difference between information and understanding. Okay. Information is knowing. Understanding is knowing what to do with what you know, particularly in the absence of complete information. A man throwing a rock through a car window is information. Having the sense to pass no judgment and take no action until the why is revealed, recognizing in other words that not all rocks thrown to the car windows are the same is understanding. There may be hundred reasons 
In fact, there may be at least one reason which is good. In fact, it happened in uh, America where a lady parked the car. Uh, she had two young children in the car. Uh, she had to go to the bank or something. So she uh, parked the car, locked the windows, thinking she will uh, come back in two or three or five minutes. As soon as she went to, into the bank, she got stuck with so many things and uh, ended up coming outside after approximately 30 minutes. By that time, one child had died, the other was taken to hospital. It was hot sun in Texas and the, the children were actually almost like put in a microwave oven. So that time if somebody had put a rock into the window, it would have he would have been given medal for it. So what we fail is to distinguish information from understanding. Information is just knowing. Understanding is the process of knowing why, what, when, how not, why not, etc., etc., okay? Information is easy. Understanding is hard. The life of human being can be seen as a series of decisions. Information makes decisions easier. And indeed, when complete information is available, our decisions are effectively made for us. It's like this. Give a man a fish and you can feed him for a day. Goes the old maxim. Teach him to fish and he eats for a lifetime. So this is the difference between what, why, how and when. Okay. Why there is so much of less understanding in the society today is People are being fed information continuously. For example, Google, you take a road map and go turn left, turn right. You don't need to think. You don't even need to put the window down and ask somebody standing there, hey, is this road going there, etc. And it happened. About a month and a half back, four doctors who were driving in a car in Kerala were using Google map to navigate. And they just finally ended up inside a flowing river in monsoon and all four died because they were following the Google map. So we need to spend time on understanding. We use information, but being driven by information all the time like it's happening now is all the more reason for us to reduce our understanding. You can see that so many cyber crimes are happening. In spite of knowing so many things are happening, people are still falling for it because they are navigated by the information on the screen. They don't understand the situation. And this is going to get worse in future. So, here are a few reasons why understanding is everything. Empathy. Understanding requires empathy and ability to put ourselves in someone else's shoes and genuinely feel like that. That's why I say when you read about war, we are lost because we have never seen what it is. We can just cannot understand the pain and the, 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 the depths of human expressions in a battlefront. Okay, You need to be an active listener. Understanding entails active listening. When we actively listen to others, we not only hear their words, but also pay attention to their tone, body language and emotions, helping us to grasp the full scope of the message. Please remember, effective understanding is a combination of words, gestures, facial expressions, moods, body language, everything. Okay. Conflict resolution. Understanding is crucial for resolving conflicts. When we take the time to understand the underlying issue and motivations for conflicting parties, we can work towards solution. Understanding forms the basis of trust. 
without trust no transaction in the world can happen take a typical family if husband and wife don't trust then there is a breakdown in the family if the teacher and the student have no trust among themselves then there is hardly any meaning in the class which is very common now today most uh, research students want to kill their guides this is what is happening there is absolutely no trust okay leaders who understand their team members on a personal level can better motivate inspire and guide them towards success it fosters a sense of belonging and loyalty of this is we have crisis in leadership today because the leaders and the masses have uh, they are not on the same page typically what's happening in the congress party today the leaders and the masses have no no common uh, platform or no common page to share and in conclusion while communication is an indispensable tool in our daily lives understanding is the compass that guides our interaction towards more meaningful enriching connections for example most of you as children there may be exceptions even though our mothers speak less we always tend to trust our mother more than our father so whenever we had any serious difficulty we go and share it with our mother because mothers by nature are empathetic that empathy builds trust even now children are very smart when they want something they know they cannot get it from the father they will go and talk to the mother and mother knows how to get it from the father so oh, this is really where the uh, you know the the proof of good understanding works and it's happening the whole of whole of society has evolved so far because of more understanding even though you have so many wars now because of misunderstanding and too many conflict but understanding is the foundation for a healthy society okay you need not write well you need not speak well if you can feel well half the problem is solved so understanding is everything i don't know if any of you have read this book it's a book which was published in 2011 in hebrew but the english edition came in 2014 to this day 22 million copies have been sold and it was continuously on the best selling list of new york best sellers list continuously for 6 years this book is so impressive it has been translated to 65 different languages worldwide already in fact it is one of the greatest book written in the last 50 years maybe it may be the book of the century i don't know in 2099 they may declare this to be the book of century of course he has written other four five books not very impressive okay because this is so so different so excellent so outstanding and it is so so penetrative i'm not joking i i i stopped all my work took this book read about 20 pages including the preface after that i just told in my house don't disturb me for 3 days i cancelled all my appointments just sat down in 3 days i finished reading this book thoroughly because i have read it half a dozen times after that but unbelievable is one of the best writings in recent time of course there are many good writings i'm not saying that there are there are many good writings examples of good reading i think very difficult to beat uh, r k narayan's writing particularly the malgudi days and uh, people who are not uh, not familiar Uh, at least uh, his uh, childhood days he spent in mysore both rk narayan and rk lakshman and uh, for those who know this is 
the famous Malgudi station actually uh, resembles the Chamrajpuram station before it was renovated. It was exactly like this 40-50 years back, the Chamrajpuram railway station in Mysore. And they were living just down that railway station near the Balal Hotel. Okay. And very interesting. I mean, you just see a sketch. This sketch is enough to convey so much of meaning. This is on the day of election. This is the common man and these are all the politicians. Then uh, after the election, the common man is completely insignificant and these people dominate. So very, very interesting. And of course, people may not know, but this is one of the best uh, children, but it is for adults also. Very good uh, series of books, uh, comic strips, originally in Belgian, but got very popular once it was translated to English worldwide. And uh, and surprisingly, it also contains very factual information about uh, the Romans, the Gauls, and uh, uh, Egyptians, everything. In fact, uh, there was a debate in the French parliament saying which textbook is good for teaching uh, uh, history and uh, uh, other things for children, they read, they, they checked many books and finally they said the Asterix comics are better because they are more close to fact and more enjoyable to read. Okay, So this is really what is uh, good reading. Can you say understanding? Mukunda Barala Musharila People may have read this, uh, particularly Leo Tolstoy's War and Peace, which was probably one of the most uh, impressionable books uh, 150 years back, including it uh, impressed uh, Mahatma Gandhi when he was in uh, South Africa. Uh, that's why he called his uh, ashram there in South Africa before he came to India as a Tolstoy farm. Uh, I mean, magnum opus, Fantastic writing, difficult to understand because it was a, it's a very, very violent and very harsh war situation and consequences of all that, the Crimean War. But uh, you may re even if you understand 10% of it, it's very impressive. Similar is Mahabharata. Okay. Mahabharata is a as a book and narrative with so many sub themes, including the Bhagavad Gita and all, it's not easy to understand. For example, there are two extreme views of Mahabharata. One is that a war like this did happen. Uh, all the Kauravas and Pandavas uh, fought each other, and Krishna played a pivotal role. All this happened. There were millions of soldiers, everybody was killed, etc., etc., all that. That's one extreme. The other extreme is. Mahabharata as a war never happened. Mahabharata is an analogy made to look realistic where five sattvic gunas fight 100 tamasic gunas. This is one extreme. Both are right. In between, there are other 100 versions of understanding Mahabharata. Now, which one is correct? Nobody knows. Each reader, to his satisfaction and to his version, feels happy. So, this is the reason why it is great writing because it allows you to understand in 100 different correct ways. Not easy. Not easy to write like that. For example, it's such a good writing. There is only one way to understand this book. Beautiful writing. So impressive. You can't even put your hand down. But I have six copies of this book. One in my backpack. One under the pillow. One in the shelf. I always have one or two copies of this ready to be given to good friends who come. Who say they don't have anything good to read. I say you read this and don't complain anymore in life. So it is that impressive. But very easy to understand. Or you need some anthropology and human evolution and other ideas background, but very easy to understand. Whereas this, 
very difficult to understand. Very difficult meaning there are hundred versions of understanding this. This is very rich understanding. Okay. So, thank you. Please read a lot. And more than reading a lot, you read well. Okay. Write, but don't write too much. Most of us, including me, we are not good writers. So, try to write little, which is useful and effective. However, try to understand at depth and in subtlety the grand wonders of world's writing. One lifetime is not enough to read a sample of all that is good. There may be at least 1,000 amazingly good books all over the world. And in fact, uh, when, when I was young and in uh, uh, almost high school, this is 1975, one of my classmates accidentally made a uh, visit to Mexico and came back. This I'm talking almost 50 years back. When he came back, he spent a year there and came back and again joined our class. So we were talking. He said, oh, what is all this? Oh, all this, uh, those days was all uh, uh, Kuempu, Shivram Karant and so many writers in, in Canada and in India, all that. He said, all that is fine, but you people have no idea who is uh, Gabriel Marquez. Because those days, Gabriel Marquez was a very popular writer, but unfortunately, his writing was in Spanish. It took a long time for it to be translated to English. And the moment it was translated to English, the whole world started reading and admiring. No wonder he even got Nobel Prize. Okay, so what I'm saying is, such good writing is there by humanity in so many languages. We may not have access to all because we don't know all the languages. But one lifetime is not enough. One lifetime is not enough. Inculcate good reading and understanding, later writing in your students also. Now we will have some time for uh, discussion and comments. Okay. Yeah, we have about 10-15 minutes time for comments and discussion. Feel free on this writing, understanding, even reading and anything else related. Uh, sir, ah. uh, sir, uh, uh, sir, to improve our writing, uh, oh. we need someone for correction, no, sir. But yes. nowadays, uh, uh, it is very difficult to find uh, uh, the uh, teachers who are good at uh, writing, sir. If we go and ask also, they tell, no, we don't have time. Uh, we are too busy, like that, they tell. So uh, what would be the solution for the beginners, sir? Okay. Uh, beginners for, so, for uh, at writing. So beginners, your friends are the best. Where are you, madam? Where are you? What are you teaching? What are you? Doing? Sir, sir, uh, sir, I teach English, sir. I work at Malwali, sir. Malwali government, government College, is it? Ah, uh, sorry, the government first. Ah, you teach English. Uh, ah, yes, sir. You don't have other English teachers, colleagues. You don't have a group which share this. Uh, Why am I saying yeah, this? Uh, Today, I, I don't suggest that. Because I all my life I have dealt with my friends and humans, but lot of good correction assistance is available on the web now. If you give your writing, ah, sir. if you give your writing, so if you give your writing, if you give your writing, there are websites where they will do corrections for you and give. It is there. Yeah, okay, okay, sir. Yeah, it is there. So, and you may not know them directly, but they will give you good, good 
correction and tell where you may have gone wrong, where you are repeatedly going wrong, what kind of things to do, all that. It is there. How to search, sir? How to search? You just Google search and see not all the web links are good. Three, four, you have to try before you get consistently good response. There are there are okay. people who spend better. time. There are people who spend time on corrections because it improves their own writing. Yes. Next. To add that, Grammarly is one of the good websites to for uh, correcting yeah, English. Grammarly language. can do, but uh, and paraphrasing also there. Uh, they both are uh, the free softwares. Uh, don't buy the licensed version; it is expensive. Yeah. Grammarly, you get a open source free, uh, free version of Grammarly. It will yeah. correct your grammar, but it may not improve the writing. For writing skill, you must read, sir. If you, yeah. if you want a good writer, you must be a good reader. Mm -hmm. Then only you can write good mm -hmm. things. Channa Modi, good, uh, good reading is there. From there, the, that's why I said writing is more difficult than reading. Reading is good evening, everyone. easier. Uh, good evening, everyone. So my name is Divya, ah. uh, and I wish to share uh, uh, something that I know about an application yeah. on Play Store. Ah. It's called as Booklet App. Ah. Uh, a guy by name Amrit Deshmukh. Uh, ah. He is with uh, uh, I would say like uh, uh, with the plan to make India read, young India read. As yeah. as you mentioned earlier, sir, that uh, the students or young ones in India uh, India don't read much. So what he has come out with is, it's a free app, first of all, uh, no commercial, uh, say, uh, uh, like uh, agenda behind. And uh, what he tries to do there is, he has started to include, say, a, a, a summary of a book. For example, if I want to read uh, Chetan Bhagat's Young India, what Young India wants, uh -huh. I can just search in it and I can download the voice. I have two options. I can download the voice or I can read the book. Uh -huh. And uh, it will only give me a summary of what that book is. Uh -huh. Supposing I don't have time, it will, uh, it, the audio is uh, about three, six minutes of duration, minimum, maximum six minutes. Okay. So within 18 minutes, a person can decide whether he, he can read that book or not or buy etc and other links for the purchase etc is given so uh, how i use this app is first of all i use this app for my own reading uh, habit mm -hmm. and i try to uh, i shared my say um, key for my students mm -hmm. and my students have i made them compulsorily download that app on their phones mm -hmm. and on everyday basis i ask them to read it and they their iq score increases there based on each number of uh, files they read Okay. Uh, their IQ score will increase. Mm. So a student at the end of the semester, when he, uh, the student who has the highest IQ or the reading score, mm. he will be awarded from my end, sir. This is what I have attempted from my side to make my where, students. Where, where, is, where are you working? I'm from Karkala, sir. GFGC Karkala, Udupi. Oh, okay. Hmm. Oh, I had come to Moodbidre 15 days back. Okay. Yeah. But yes, sir. The, in, in your Good. neighborhood, Thank you, in your neighborhood, uh, there are very interesting fellow who is doing a lot of experiments in English reading, writing. Uh, he is uh, uh, Surya Narayan in uh, Ujre College, uh, SDM Ujre College. SDM Ujre, sir. Ah, first grade college. Because it is autonomous, we do not have much. Yes, oh, yes, yeah, sir. he is doing spectacular. We are affiliated to well. Bangalore University, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. Yeah, he is doing exceedingly well. He is a good family friend of ours. He is doing very, very innovative things with English, actually. So, yes. Yashoda, madam, you please uh, make some efforts. It will work. It will definitely work. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Ah, then, what else? Any other question, comments? Some of you are in English and uh, uh, library science and all may be a little disappointed because I come from a technical background and I don't know how much of uh, English language uh, I could uh, help you with. No, the session was very relevant and very uh, useful, sir, for us. Uh, uh, we have already uh, 
uh, came across your classes say, in the orientation program yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. in the same HRDC, uh, Mysore. And uh, so you are a very excellent person, sir, uh, with uh, a practical man, if uh, we can uh, speak about you. And this session was also very nice, sir. No, you all have to do well because yes, yes, sir. A entire India's younger generation depends on you people, and the younger generation is slowly being spoiled and misled. It is very important to harness them because uh, India is the only country in the world with a young population now and in future. You will be surprised how bad it is in Japan. In Japan, many restaurants have people working who are aged between 90 and 94 years. So it's, it's, it's a nightmare. The society is a nightmare with 70% geriatric population and uh, very difficult to manage there. You see some other uh, face of Japan. But inside there is, is a nightmare. It's a declining population, sir. Yeah, yeah. So that's why, but our uh, increasing, uh, improving uh, younger population are so indisciplined. They don't have behavior. They don't have skill. They don't have knowledge. That's why we lack in productivity, sir. Yeah, yeah. Very, very this thing. So colleges are the place where this can be repaired. So don't worry about exam and results, all that. Make sure them in every class of 50 or 60, 20 good useful citizens come out. They are the assets for the future. Hello. Uh, yeah. Sir, sir, one more thing to point Hello, out sir. is... Uh, yes, sir. Hello, speak. sir. I am... Can uh, I speak, sir? Yeah, yeah, please. Yes, sir. I am Dr. Madhuri from Maharashtra. Hmm. I am librarian, sir. In our library, uh, we uh, provide books to students. Hmm. And after that, we gave, uh, uh, the student read the review about that book. Ah. And we collect that uh, all review and publish in as the form of book. Oh, very good. Very good. Yeah. But who, who selects the books? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Who selects the books? The students select the books and they ah. read ah, okay. and they, they, they gave me the review ah. of that book. Ah, what a Kagala name of Jarai then? Oh, we, we do they give are you, do you give them a set of books for them to select with or do yes, they read, do some preliminary reading and then select? No, sir, they they uh, went to the reading room, oh. they they went to the stack room and they chose the books which oh. they want. Very good. Actually. We have the lot of collection of books. 50,000 books I have collected. In oh, my very life. good. Very, very good. In fact, very, very so unfortunate they is to, they are slowly... You have adapted, madam. Very good practices you have adapted. Huh. Yes, ma'am. I today I am in uh, home. That's why if if I, I am in college, I show you the review of that books which we publish. No, unfortunately, they are killing the library everywhere. I don't know why they are doing that. Library is the most important part of an academic institution. Library is yes, where but people... The student, student don't want to read, sir. Library is the they place only... where, uh, you know, all the good things happen. But uh, I don't know why uh, library is so underplayed now. Uh, on the in uh, WhatsApp, they always use WhatsApp group, Facebook group. They don't want to read any book. Yeah, I, I spent six years and two months in IIT Bombay for my research. Yeah, and out of yes, six sir. years, two months, almost five years was in in the library. We hardly spent time in the department or the. We used to go mark attendance, talk to few people but spent most of our research time in the library. Yes, sir. I, when I was in the uh, MLIP student, I also ah. spent all time in my library, sir. But I, to, today, the student is not aware about the library and books. They don't want to read. Oh, we have to bring it back. There is no other solution because 
once a reading habit was stopped the society becomes non learning society you see it in middle east now what are the problem one, with iran iraq one, saudi arabia uh, syria all that they are all very rich countries but as a society they don't learn that's why they are always having trouble even though they are very rich 10 times richer than us per capita income everywhere is so high but all the time they are fighting each other killing each other so a society which stops learning starts decaying and one more activity i i always done sir mm. yeah, i visit the nearby school oh. in front of my college in front of my village and i visit the school and i distribute the story book to the student and encourage them to read very good no oh, that's the way you want to catch them young yes sir yeah any other uh, comment question